Here's why I don't collect SRX cards. I promise it's not boring and stupid. <laughs> SRX cards. I've had my own fair share of SRX cards in the past, but I've decided to sell them because I don't feel the need to collect them. So I guess if I'm going over what I feel as if I shouldn't collect, I should go over what I actually do collect. One of my main collections going on is the Roland U110. I have a lot of these different just cards. I have like, I think like 10 or 20 different cards of these. And I also have a couple of D20, D110 cards, like this little voice crystal thing in the jiggy. This best choice sound library. I've also got these voice crystal Kurzweil K2000 floppies. I don't know. I also moderately collect the SRJV80 style cards, but I don't have any at the moment. I have a Roland JV1010 that actually has, it has a slot, but it has the session card built in. And the only SRJV80 card I had was session. So kind of defeats the purpose of collecting the card. You have it built in. So you would think an avid card collector, raw module collector sort of person would actually eat up an SRX card like it was lunch, but actually don't. So here's why. So there's more reasons than just price, but in a world where money is a thing, price is obviously going to be one of the main factors. And it's not just the fact that they cost quite a bit, because they do cost quite a bit. I'll throw up a random SRX card on screen, probably not even looking, SRX 07. And yeah, here's the price. I haven't even checked yet. It's probably like 100 to $200 at least, at the very least, I would guess like 175. So for each card to be getting up into the couple hundred dollars range, you really have to factor in how worthwhile particularly getting the card is in your setup and, if, and just cross shop and just see if there's anything else really and also you have to think about how unique the item is. Like a lot of these like U110 cards, I really can't get them anywhere else. So it's either get the card or just not have it. So that kind of solves that for me. But one of the main problems with SRX cards is that they're so easily accessible through other means. So starting off with the most obvious one is the Rolling Cloud plugin versions. These plugins are 69 bucks each, which is already gonna be cheaper than the card. And for my workflow and setup, they just work way easier. Like if you add up the total of literally every perpetual license of each SRX plugin compared to just three-ish cards, they end up being around the same price. And on top of that, I just fell a victim of slash purchased Roland's Play for Life subscription pack, which gets you two plugins per year for 200 bucks with one year of old. So it's like you get ultimate for 200 bucks a year, which is like the normal price. And then you also get to keep two plugins. So it's pretty good value. So of course, you know me, I like value. But yeah, the SRX cards compared to the plugins are even cheaper. And they're honestly like some of the most expensive expansion cards. Like one of my favorite things about expansion cards, like my little dinky U110 cards are like literally 20 bucks. But I swear these cards are literally some of the most expensive cards I've ever seen other than the freaking V-Synth D50 card, but no, nobody talks about the V-Synth D50 card. But also adding on how it works with my workflow, I only have four SRX expansion slots versus just the subscription of plugins. I have two in my XV2020, which I'm planning on selling, honestly, unrelated reasons, but yeah, this might go down to two. And then two more in my Sonic cell, which I mean, I might sell, but honestly, it's too good of a value. And also, speaking of gear, if I'm even gonna worry about gear, why not just get the Integra 7? It comes with all of the SRX cards literally built in. Yeah, honestly, when you just go to cross shop SRX cards, it's like, why would I buy the SRX cards? I could get the Rolling Cloud bundle. I could get the Integra 7. There's literally so many things that you could get instead of just the cards. And the cards are also the inverse of my workflow. I like to have either rompler modules that just, you turn them on and you work, or it's just like a plugin. But the cards you have to go in, you have to literally get tools, you have to install them. Cause I don't have 12 slots. I could get 12 slots, but that's how many SRX cards there are, there's 12. So it's like, ah, I don't know. And then one of my other reasons, I kind of went on about this a little bit, but 
They're just not unique enough for the price. For hundreds of dollars a card, for little rompler module sounds that you can get a lot of other places, including as previously listed, it's just kind of an ask. Also, some of the SRX cards don't even have original sounds. I believe it's SRX 07. It just has four of the SRJV80 cards and that's literally it. It's not even new. It's just an SRX card that just copied itself, which is odd. It's odd that they do that, but I guess it's not illegal. And also, I don't particularly care, but they're not even vintage. They came out in like 2003 or some crap. And like, they don't even have the cool factor of like, whoa, retro, like interesting thing. It just seems like everything that's cool about my U110 collection is just the inverse of what the SRX even is. I don't know, moderately opinionated hot take that moderately nobody cares about. So yeah, do you have any pros of buying SRX cards because I'd be reluctant but eager to hear because they're so expensive. Awesome.